can't do business with Hitler. We are now at war. There are but two alternatives, total victory or total defeat. There can be no such thing as a military stalemate that would result in the survival of Hitlerism. That is the opinion of a man who knows. Douglas Miller, for 15 years, commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. Presenting a radio series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. Episode 11, Swastikas Over the Equator. <laughs> Douglas Miller speaking. Today you will hear a great deal of discussion about the possibilities of a German invasion force based on Descartes in Africa crossing the relatively narrow strip of 1,800 miles of the Atlantic Ocean and attacking Brazil. We must be alert to this possibility, but we should be even more alert to the fact that Germany already has an army in South America. Unbelievable? Not at all. Take Mexico, for example. In the spring of 1940, Baron von Bockerbacher of the German Gestapo arrived in Mexico City and was met by Arthur Dietrich, notorious Nazi fifth column. The two men then took an automobile and drove some miles out of Mexico City to a certain rural community where... I find our work a little different here than in Japan, Baron. You mean your work with the German residents? Yeah, it's basically with the German residents. Here isn't all that in American countries. We Germans are concentrated in our own German community. Uh, around strategic points. Strategic points, yeah. Army towers, main highways, up, railroads, highways, etc. The group we shall see today is located in the neighborhood of a power plant, which supplies all the electric power for the capital. How inconvenient it would be for the Mexicans in case of invasion if this power plant were suddenly seized or blown up, eh, did you? Right, I think. Why is this deserted road? I don't understand. The down is now uh, one minute before two o'clock. Precisely on the hour, you will see an army pass with Boy. A German army. A German army? Here in Mexico? Yes. Not in the least. A look. A few seconds early. Here's an army. Bustic armband, bound shirt, everything. Now, passing in review for your benefit, now, and I can get to arrive in Britain after the loose. Yeah, boys. I'm Hitler. I am Hitler. Wunder King. There must be 500 of them. 510, to be exact. Three of regiments like this all over Mexico. Indeed. How can you display such strength without running into trouble with the authorities? We never could in Norway. To the authority, they are bound. This is really a hiking club for a picnic group, so to speak. Normally, we don't wear the uniform or what it is. Not lately, anyway. Well, if you have arms, yeah, there is no law against something, you understand. Therefore, we have uh, <laughs> a hunting club. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And who pays for all this? German businessmen here in Mexico. And your headquarters? Schoolhouses. We have our own German school here. Aha. Uh-huh. What is the Nazi party called here? The Dance Group of Mexico. But our, our activities originate with what we call the German popular community, a group whose activities are purely social and recreational. Social and recreational? Yeah. <laughs> you mean like uh, hunting and hiking, eh? <laughs> <laughs> is that a camera slung around your shoulder? Oh, yeah, Baron. That is another of our recreational activities. <laughs> Amateur for poverty, we have the marvelous pictures of barracks, railroad terminals, arsenals, garden placements, and the like. And just a hobby, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a hobby. <laughs> yes. Like hiking clubs and hunting clubs. <laughs> marvelous hobby. <laughs> So you see, Germany has an army in Mexico, and the organization there is duplicated almost precisely in every country of South and Central America. You want proof? Read John Gunther's authoritative book, Inside Latin America. See pages 110, 111, and 112. Remember, there are millions of Germans living in South America. They have been there for years. 
In Brazil alone, there are 830,000 Germans. In the relatively little country of Paraguay, there are at least 18,000. Hitler has already made a number of attempts to seize control of various South American countries, attempts that many times came within a hairbreadth of succeeding. Consider the Nazi push in Bolivia. In July of 1941, a certain letter from Berlin addressed to Ernst Wendler, the German minister of poor Bolivia, fell into the hands of Bolivian authorities. A young officer in the Bolivian army took the letter to his friend. For me? Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Sit down. Thank you, Senor Trino. This letter, will you read it? Is it addressed to me? No, it fell into our hands quite by accident. It is addressed to Ernst Wendler, the German minister. Who is he from? Major Elias de Monte, our military attaché in Berlin. Hello, he proper to read it. Senor Trino, you must. Very well, then. Let me see. Senor Ernst Wendler, honorable German minister to Bolivia. We have received all the maps showing the most favorable sites for landing. Landing? Landing what? Of the Senor Tunnel. In vain. Oh, ridiculous. Let me read further. See. Si. Everything will be changed when we assume power. We assume power. Who is we? The Nazis. The Nazis? See. Si. Lieutenant, can you vouch for the signature here? I have checked with experts, Senor Tunnel. That is Major Monte's signature. Incredible. Please continue. Is right for I would like to back in the Pagora site and take hooks and bandits from the coast where we have put friends. First, we take Bolivia and then other countries under Yankee influence. Soon, other nations will follow us and under the guidance of the supreme leader, we will save the future of South America and start a new era of order and work to sign Major Elias Del Monte. Unbelievable. Belmonte, a traitor? What is it so filthy, Senor Colonel? I thought you should see it. You did just right, Lieutenant. Hand me that telephone. Yes, Senor Colonel. Hello? Operator. This call is urgent. Connect me with Army Headquarters in La Paz. Unbelievable, isn't it? But the letter you just heard is a word for word quotation. If you want to see the letter yourself in cold print, get a copy of the New York Times for July 24, 1941. Turn to page four. If the Bolivians hadn't luckily discovered the letter in time, the Nazis might very well have a puppet government in Bolivia today. And what about the Nazi-inspired revolt in Argentina? In the summer of 1940, at the waterfront in Buenos Aires, a number of longshoremen were unloading crates when... Hey, you, Manuel, take it easy on the step. Don't drop those crates. Eh, do not worry, Pedro. Manuel never drops nothing. You better not. Those are fruit in that crate. Caramba, am I stupid? Do not I know it? Furthermore, those crates are for Schwartz, Meinhammer, and company. You know what those Germans are about the damaged fruit. For the last time, I tell you, shut up. I am not going to drop oh, 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 oh. Argentina, is it? But if you want to, see the New York Times for June 23rd, 1940. So many incidents of this type occurred in Argentina that the Argentina Congress started an investigation of Nazi affairs. At the height of the investigation in September of 1941, 
the Argentina police and army suddenly swung into action to quell a Nazi-inspired revolt. Nazis were arrested. Airports were seized by government forces as a protective measure. The German ambassador, von Kerman, was accused of fostering the revolt. Argentinian reporters interviewed him at the German embassy. Why do you not answer my question? Please, 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 gentlemen, one at a time. Senor Berman, is it true that there are some 60,000 German stormtroopers in Brazil? Uh, of course, that's just ridiculous. So what about the evidence collected by the government, Senor Berman? The evidence? Is this fully enforced? Is it true, Senor Berman, that the German embassy offers bribes to officers of the Argentine army? Yes. Ah, that is nothing but lying Yankee propaganda. So what about this watch that seems to of the government, Senor Berman? Nonsense, that there was no. How about the charge that your embassy spends ten times as much money in Argentina as does the United States embassy? An, an, an absolute lie. But that's a fact easily proven. Yes, well, uh, well, I... Uh, you must excuse me, please, gentlemen. I can't explain it. Please, please, please. Ah, uh, what an order. Please, come in here. Get our bags back. Something tells me we won't be staying much longer in Argentina. <laughs> Baron von Thurman, the German ambassador, was really on the spot. Thirty leading Germans were arrested. Great crowds marched in Buenos Aires shouting, Viva Democracy, and down with the dictator. Said Raul de Monte took order, head of the Congressional Committee investigating anti-Argentina activities, we have proof that 500,000 Nazi stormtroopers are organized throughout South America, 60,000 of them in Argentina alone. A complete account of how the Argentina government smashed the Nazi plot is in John Gunther's book, Inside Latin America. He paid 310. We can be quite sure that most of the South American governments have taken steps to keep the German fifth columnists under control. But South America's first line of defense is the Atlantic Ocean, and the Eastern Front where the Soviets hold Hitler in check. That is why we must throw our full aid to Russia and England to keep Hitler bottled up on the continent of Europe. For if England and Russia fall, Hitler will turn his full attention to South America. What will happen then? The answer lies in the words of Adolf Hitler himself, as reported by Hermann Rauschnig on page 61 of his book, The Voice of Destruction. We shall create a new Germany in South America. That continent calls for a capable master. With the treasures of its soil, Germany will be rich and great. There we shall find everything we need. You can't do business with Hitler. You have been listening to episode 11 in a series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. This series is based on the experiences of Douglas Miller, who was for 15 years commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. If you would like a copy of this script, send us a postcard. Address it to the radio section, OEM, Washington, D.C. I'll repeat that address, radio section, OEM, Washington, D.C. Listen for the 12th program in this series, which is entitled Money Talks with a German Accent. This transcribed program, written and directed by Frank Telford, was brought to you by the radio section of the Office for Emergency Management, in Washington.